Genesis 360 begins his campaign for the invisible front line. We all applaud the front line health workers, collectors, among others who work day by day to fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. But there's also another first line, anonymous, invisible heroes who perform the essential task of keeping hospitals, supermarkets, offices and homes clean. A front line that fights against the virus day and night. However, many of them are undocumented. They do not receive any government or private aid and are heroes left to their own devices. Genesis 360 advocates their inclusion for these workers to finally have the necessary documentation so that they receive the assistance they deserve. Genesis 360, so that the invisible front line is included. May we all see and applaud them for their work. Genesis 360, connect your senses. everybody welcome happy week happy monday welcome to cooking with paula today we have such a special show for you guys we have we're gonna make tapas today we have two amazing and super simple recipes chickpea fritters and we also have cannellini beans with pancetta and parmigiano reggiano cheese but before we start i also want to say thank you to our sponsor ancora dress to swim Welcome everybody. Today we have, like I said, such a special guest. We have Christopher Pierce from, uh, from Food Inspires. His website is foodinspires.com. All right, Chris, let's start. Zavala. Welcome, Christopher Pires today. He's not only a great friend of mine, we have worked together, uh, he's so much fun to work with, but the best about him is not only his personality, who he is, but his food is amazing. Um, let me just tell you before, I, I, before he starts uh, cooking, uh, I, I love his story. Chris is he was he was in the financial industry, and then one day, many years ago, a few years ago, and then one day he said, "That's it. I'm just gonna do what I really love to do, which is cooking." And I really admire that from you, Chris. He decided to quit, and he went to cooking school. He went to George Brown College and like Liaison College at the same time. Uh, he's now a trained chef. And he's going to talk to us a little bit more about his, his story and his food and his passion. Uh, Chris, how are you? Welcome. I am so excited. Thanks so much for having me. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. I'm surviving this uh, COVID-19 thing. Isn't how are you doing? Good? Good. Thank you, Chris. Isn't it crazy how these, these crazy times and... Uh, but you know what? I think we, like we were talking prior to the show, it's funny how... All chefs, sometimes we have to only, we cook for everybody else and we never really think of what we like to cook. Oh, and yeah. I think, right, like to me, these, these days have been really amazing this couple of months because I have been cooking what I really want. And yes. I think uh, we have been a bit more creative and uh, you guys have to check Chris' website. Um, we're just going to put it here in camera because I really want you to go and check all the amazing recipes that he has. And in the last couple of months, all those recipes that he had developed are amazing so chris what are you doing for us today oh uh, this is one of my favorite type of meals to cook it's tapas style so uh really great summer entertaining i know we can't do too much right now but when it does get to the point where we can do more this is a great uh, cannellini uh and pancetta uh, recipe for uh it can either be a full meal or it can be a tapas style in a small bowl i'll show you how i serve it when i serve it here as a tapas and then i'm also going to make you some chickpea fritters which i'm going to use as some ingredients like uh chickpea flour which is very common and very very much available right now um i use 
use uh, chilies for everything because I love things hot. So I'm going to put chilies in that. I'm going to put some whole cumin. Where's my whole cumin? Oh, here's my whole cumin. This is my whole cumin. So it looks like a little seed. So it's really going to add a little bit of flavor to this chickpea flour uh, that I'm going to mix up uh, here for you. So that's what's going to be our, our chickpea uh, uh, batter. I'm going to do a little treat as well because we do like things hot in my house. So I've got some jalapenos. I'm actually going to slice them in half and dip them into the batter and we're going to pan fry them as well. So we'll have a good variety of things. So, you know, if you've got friends who likes things hot, this is a great thing to use. If they like it hotter, I kind of like the Thai chilies because they got really good heat, but it may be too hot for most. OK, so let's uh, let's start off, if I can, please, by uh, mixing up my batter. So I've got my flour measured out in here. I'm going to add some things to that just to keep this batter going. So this is just an, uh, an equal amount of water, uh, sort of in a, almost two cups of water. I don't need all of it. I want a batter, but I don't want it to be sticky. So I'm just going to put a little bit of time. How it goes. I'm okay. also going to add my uh, cumin seeds. Yeah. Just whole, Chris, so you don't Yeah, you know what, the whole, it's nice to use. I know most people aren't used to it, but really when you cook it, it almost um, dissolves in terms of the, the texture. You don't feel the texture, but you get that great taste. Oh, so we're gonna put that. We're also gonna put some uh, salt. All right. And again, Chris, how much you put is up to you. I put about, I measured out about uh, two teaspoons in here, but I may use less. You may use. Chris, do you mind moving your bowl a little bit towards you? Yes, perfect. A I little guess? bit towards you so we okay. can see. So again, you can see this is really thick, so I don't really want it this thick. So I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. Mm -hmm. uh, again, sorry, there's no, there's no exact measurement to this. Um, it's kind of difficult because really it's like any other sort of quick tapas style recipe. I like the recipes that I can adapt and adjust, right? That's like right. My book, I never follow a recipe. I yeah. love it. And you know, that's what I keep saying all the time. Don, the recipe is a guideline for you just to kind of follow uh, through the ingredients, but you have to cook with your eyes, with your mouth, with your nose. Absolutely. I and mean, you get kind of a sense of when it's right to stop adding things and not. I'm also going to put half an onion in. Okay? You can put more onion if you want, but because I'm going to do the uh, bonus jalapeno peppers, and really there's only my wife and myself to eat this right now, so I'm only going to make a smaller batch. But I'm just going to take half an onion. And the way I like to cut the onion, I don't know if you can see this or not, is I'm actually going to take the onion. I cut both ends off, the top and the bottom. I'm just going to lay it flat, and I'm going to cut it this way. Mm -hmm. Now you could dice the onion as well, and if you were just doing, just, you know, a plain simple fritter, you can also yes. flip it over when you get to the end and just sort of trim that off as well. And that's all I want to do. I just want to take this onion, drop it into my batter again. Okay, just raw the raw onion into your batter. Oh, raw that's amazing. Raw onion into my batter. And of course, I talked about chilies. I better add my chilies in. So again, you can put as much as you like or as little as you like. If you, you can also add cayenne pepper. That also okay. works really well. But I'm going to just use a couple of Thai chilies, maybe Listen. three. And I uh, just, you know. Chris and I, we have that in common. We love spices. We love chilies. I see Arturo, our producer here, just nodding his face like, oh. Absolutely. Yes. Guys, spices, uh, chilies are super healthy. Great for yeah. your immune system, good for right? The blood. Good for the blood. <laughs> Good to the heart. Okay. Very spicy. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so here we go. This is the, this is what the mixture looks like. I'm just gonna let this sit for a few minutes. Everything is mixing. Can you see that? Okay. Yes. Perfect. Chris, where, where, where do you buy your chickpea pa, uh, your chickpea flour? Actually, most grocery stores now carry them. It's uh, okay. it goes by two names. One is chickpea flour, and one is uh, besan. Besan is the Indian name for chickpea flour. Okay. So B E S A N. I can show you the uh, uh, the package. I've taken the, just a okay out of that. Can you see that? Okay. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So besan. B E S A N. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, and it's a it's a great it's a great way to just incorporate some protein and fiber into your food, and it's already made it as a that flour is amazing. Absolutely. And you can use this for all kinds of stuff, right? You can use this also for making things like chapatis or flatbreads. Mix it in with a little bit of white flour, whole wheat flour. You got a great meal. So that's going to sit and rest for a little while, guys. I'm just going to put that aside. But now I want to start off in this beautiful cannellini bean and pancetta dish. So I've got some uh, pancetta here and I'm just going to put it into my uh, pot. Perfect. 
But can we use can we use something instead of pancetta? Like, can we use bacon? bacon. Can we use ham? Can we use? Absolutely. You know that uh, I, I kind of like doing this dish with uh, smoked turkey as well. Okay. You know, you get the smoked turkey uh, legs or the smoked turkey um, uh, uh, thighs. And you just chop that up and you just toss it into the pan. The only thing that'll be different is you may need to add a little bit of oil. My okay. pan right now has nothing but the pancetta in it, right? So all it's got is no oil there because it's going to release its oil. And now, that's lots of flavor. Yeah, for sure, right? So typically, um, I, uh, I call that oil, I call it extract. So it's <laughs> actually going to be called pancetta extract because we don't want to use the word F-A-T when we're cooking because we don't like to think of that. But this oh. is just pancetta extract, okay? <laughs> so if you hear me say <laughs> that, you'll, don't, don't wonder, what's he talking about? It is pancetta extract to me. <laughs> uh, I'm also going to chop up a shallot uh, and just really simply, right? Take the top end off, the bottom end off. And again, I like to cut it up in that way um, when, I'm, when I'm cutting things up, just because I think it makes a nicer little um, sort of bite uh, when, you, when you're having your food. So right. I'll close sure. my uh, skins of the shallots. And if you haven't used shallots before, really nice. Uh, very soft taste, very much like a spring onion, or a bit, but a little bit more gentler. And it's used a lot in cooking. So this time, I'm just going to slice this this way. I was going to go this way, but I think I'll just stick with this method. Okay. I'm just going to slice this nice and thin, right? Yeah. I, I always say that this, the uh, the shallots are not as strong as the garlic, but not as mild as onion. So it's just like the perfect in between. Absolutely, nice, a really nice section. And so there's some chefs who just use shallots. I'm okay with it. I I, I like them. I, uh, I wouldn't make it an only use for me just because it doesn't suit my uh, my cuisine sort of. Yeah. But I do like to do this. So my pancetta is starting to um, sweat down a little bit, release some of that lovely extract. And this is optional, although I think it is in the recipe, actually. I'm going to put a couple of these um, uh, dried chilies in. These are um, just uh, miscellaneous types of dried chilies. I travel a lot, and whenever I travel, I yeah. always try to pick foods from different parts of the world. And because I like chilies so much, I picked up a whole bunch of chilies from all different places, wow. Spain, Mexico, uh, Italy. And so I just combine them in a big jar and I just throw them in for flavor. So I'm just going to take these whole ones and I'm just going to crush them in here. Yay, the party is oh, there. Yeah. It's going to just add an amazing amount of flavor to this. Yes. So we just keep that stirred, keep it going. Uh, I will add the onions in a little bit as well. And one of the other things that's nice to add to this dish is fresh sage. So yes. if, you got, if you like fresh sage, it's fantastic. But probably, you know, we use this a lot in some of our cooking classes and stuff like that. And especially yes. when we work in the cooking schools because they got uh, all availability, all this good stuff. So I'm going to take about three or four sage leaves. I love sage. Oh, you know, I, I, I wasn't a fan for the longest time, but now I, I love it. And you know what I've learned, Chris, too? When when you are going to use fresh herbs, don't be afraid. Just add a lot. Just like don't only add one leaf or one teaspoon or that. Just go and, and uh, right? It's healthy. Yeah. For sure. And you know, the, the big thing now is I don't I don't grow anything in my backyard because I, I, don't, I don't have that much dedicated time to look after it. So I buy the big pots okay. of the herbs. They got the all mixed herbs in it. And yeah. then I use that. There are some that I will buy pots individually because I use a lot of it, like basil. I'll buy a big pot of basil. I'll go with that. Uh, uh, but the rest of the stuff that I don't use that much. I use a lot of rosemary too because I love the smell of rosemary. Yeah, yeah. For rosemary. So both of those. But uh, not so much on the parsley side. I, I don't do too much with that. So I don't know if you can get... Uh, stupid, you guys aren't here. We don't have smell of vision eh? Oh, my God. I know. Look at that. Can you see that? I want to show you all that beautiful pancetta extract that's yes, in there. No, no, that, that, that extract is gold. That's it. That's Absolutely. It, gold. To that, I'm going to add my uh, sage leaves. So I'm just going to give it a couple of rough chops. Okay. Just like that. I'm gonna drop them in, and while I'm dropping the sage in first, I want it to infuse that pancetta extract and the pancetta with that lovely flavor. I want the chilies to mingle nicely with it, and then I also want to put in my uh, my uh, shallots because I want them to cook down a little That's bit, right? right? So pancetta, um, the sage. shallots, sage, and the chili peppers. Right, and first. then once this is done, I'm just gonna let this cook. And then we'll come back and I'm going to add my cannellini beans to this. And so when you put the cannellini beans in, 
Uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of schools of thought with this. A lot of people don't use the liquid from the cannellini bean can. Okay. I like using the liquid from the cannellini bean can. Let me qualify that. I'm using a can for two reasons. One, uh, it's this is supposed to be easy cooking. If I had time, a lot more time, I would soak the beans overnight and boil them. Superbly different texture, right? Even a slightly different taste because they're not cooked at that stage. Uh, but this is a can of, of uh, cannellini beans. It's in its liquid, and the liquid is a good thing to use because that liquid actually is going to thicken up and give you a really beautiful sort of thicker uh, gravy to go with the beans and the pancetta. Yes. So I'm just going to add that in. This is about ready right now. So I'm just going to push this in here. Okay, the whole thing. Yeah, the whole can. And you know, when I first did this, uh, we were in, I think we had this in Italy the first time I had this. And so what I, what I ended up doing, we had it in a little restaurant um, and uh, they served it to us as, as a second like entree with some, some uh, toast, uh, baguette pieces. And then when I came home, I just did the same thing because it's really you know, it's very, it's so simple to do, right? So I just did that. I took it as it was. And then I just um, uh, sometimes when I do it for my wife and myself, I will add a, a, some chicken stock to this. And I got a really big, beautiful bean soup, right? So then I can have that. I can then add anything I want to it. I can add some uh, frozen veggies. I can add some fresh veggies. And, you know, we've done such a good job right now with frozen veggies because they're just as good as the fresh in terms of nutrition, in terms of quality. So don't be afraid to use frozen vegetables if you don't have the, uh, access, especially now that we're in pantry cooking style mode. Yeah. You yeah. can't go out that much to shop, so use what's in your fridge. So I would add chicken stock to this or vegetable stock. Uh, mm -hmm. I would add some, uh, maybe some peas, some carrots, uh, any type of mixed vegetable I have, uh, and just make a little soup out of it. I got a full meal out right there on its own. If I leave it just okay. as it is like this, this is this is terrific. Now I haven't added any salt to that, so we don't need salt. I'm just going to get my pepper For sure. and uh, relax some pepper to that. Oh, look at that. That's a really small pepper uh, grinder. Oh, look yeah. at that guy. Small pepper mill. This is the pride <laughs> and joy of my kitchen. Look, it's really worn. It's not just for show. It's really, really worn. That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. So no salt because the pancetta is really salty. So you're going to just take it easy and check, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm yes. going to put this on very low right now. And then I'm going to leave it for a few minutes. It's going okay. to thicken up on its own. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I always, I always, uh, people ask all the time, so what is the difference between a tapa and an appetizer? And I always say, is the size. Usually an appetizer is one or two bites, but the tapa is maybe like six or, I don't know, five or six bites, right? It's a little bit yeah. larger than an appetizer. Right. And I think, I think a, a tapa, I mean, that we've had, it, there's more than just, depending on, on what you're having, there's usually okay. more than one piece where an appetizer is one thing that you're eating uh -huh. and that's it. Because right? uh, it's usually, if it's a past hors d'oeuvre or past appetizer, that's usually what you're talking about. But I think a tapas can be a meal. Like I would have nothing but tapas all day long. I could, I would have that and be very content with that as a meal. Okay. That's cooking on, on our medium low fire. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then I've got in here, I'm going to get my, my pan ready because I want to do the chickpea fritters, okay, because that's time to get that on. So I'm going to put this on, we're going to heat it up, and then I'll bring the heat down. So I've got it on high right now. So this is, so this is my batter. You can see it's nicely together. There's no lumps in it other okay. than the onions, right? Okay. So we're going to take that. I'm going to take a couple of these because I want to do these first. And again, my suggestion, I would leave the, uh, the, the, the uh, stems on. Of course, wash it before you use it. Okay. But, um, cut this in. You can either leave it in half. I'm going to leave it in whole. And, you know, I often get asked by people, do you take out the chilies? No, the seeds, I mean. No, no, please don't do that. Why would you have a jalapeno without seeds? That's a craziness. <laughs> now, the heat is all in here. But to me, if you if you don't want the seeds and the heat, just have a green pepper. Don't That's waste right. your time on a jalapeno, right? So we're going to just toss this in my batter. Okay. Oh, and my God, Chris. Oh, my God. I, I, I need to try that. And as I said, you know, you can you can do this with when we first came to the to Canada many many years ago. My father used to do this for us as a as a treat, and so um, uh, he would use because we couldn't get jalapenos back in the '60s in Canada. It just wasn't heard of. Okay. So he would use banana peppers because they had those. 
So we would use banana peppers and we would do this with banana peppers. But really such a simple dish, right? This is all you're going to have. So once you've got that done, you've got it mixed. Just make sure that everything's coated properly, right? Okay. And you can do this the way I did, or you can actually just dip it in and bring it out again. Okay, so there's lots of different ways to do it. I'm just doing it because here, here I want to be neat and not show you that I use my hands for everything. Okay. So I'm going to let this hot oil, make sure it's nice and hot. Okay, what kind of oil are you using? Is it in a vegetable oil? Any, any uh, neutral? Yeah, you know, and, and I'm not a big, um, I, I don't, I don't um, uh, specialize in tons of different oils. I typically like just to use a vegetable oil. Sure, uh, yeah. And a quality one, right? Like um, what, yeah. whatever brand you, you like using, you've got good taste for, just use that one. Uh, and I've got maybe about a half a centimeter to maybe a little bit more than that in this pan. I don't want to deep fry because we're trying to eat healthier, but yeah. I have to it right so basically a good quality oil i could have used olive oil okay but you know what it's going to be quite hot and you lose the benefits of olive oil at that stage when it gets too hot so we're not going to use olive oil so i think my 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 uh oil is ready look at i'm just going to take these oh, things out. my god chris i'm <laughs> dying here we're just going to shake off the excess okay uh not yet don't rush this yes if that's super that, important yeah, it's right. Because if you put it in when it's not hot enough, it's just going to absorb all that oil. So uh, be patient with the process and uh, enjoy cooking. Don't make it a chore, right, Paula? Uh, exactly. I've worked with Paula for so many events, and uh, watching her watching her cook is like is like watching I don't know watching those uh, those butterflies dance around on flowers. <laughs> she's so quick and she's so fast, and everything moves so smoothly. And you can tell she loves and she's she's yeah. truly. Loves that's what she's doing <laughs> and uh, and I like working with chefs that are passionate like me about food because I think yeah. food makes everything better Thank I think you. things like this pancetta and, and cannellini bean dish you know I mean I think we would have world peace if everybody ate more pancetta or bacon uh, to me that's just a given so <laughs> exactly. yeah I, don't know. I, I totally agree with you yeah. so Chris I have a question for you yeah. since you were a kid you always ate spicy food as a kid, or, or is that something that you learned to eat later on in your life? Yeah, you know what? I think I was about uh, eight years old when I had my first taste of spicy, spicy food. Okay. Uh, and it came from a bottle of Tabasco sauce, believe it or not. Oh, really? Yeah, that was the first, because that's all we could get here, right? <laughs> Uh -huh. I was yeah, very yeah. young when I came here, so there's only a few things I remember. And then from there, it just went up. And uh, now that's all I eat is the uh, spice. But of course, now we get we access to everything. Yeah, I know. I know. So it's, it's, it's all it's good. Beautiful. But yeah, I've always loved uh, spicy food. I got my son in, uh, involved in it at a young age, too, and he's pretty good. He does, uh, he does his own stuff. He loves to cook. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever he can so it's kind of nice because these these kids at that age you know 30 somethings they uh they don't do a lot of cooking they eat out way too much yes and then the other thing that i hate to say but what they do is they order those pre-cooked meals or pre-cut um, meals mm -hmm. from chefs yeah say, your father's a chef he could have taught you all these things why are you doing that but you know it is they are who they are i know okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start turning these over slightly. I don't know you guys can see this. Uh, let's see. Oh my goodness! Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. I'm just gonna uh, just flip these over. Right. I'm just gonna go through the camera. Just swing <laughs> through the camera to your house, Chris. Okay. That's amazing. I, I just can't. I just can only imagine the smell in your kitchen. Yeah, this was actually, um, and again, there's lots of different varieties, right? You, I'm sure that some of them, uh, some people have had out there, um, oh, Jesus, I was going to say vegetables that are coated, like tempura. Yes, so yeah, for sure. That, this is the same idea, but with a tastier flour. And of course, because we put things in the mix, it's not just a plain um, uh, light batter. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. just that, that much more flavor, right? So yeah. this, is gonna, this is going to uh, come down, guys. I'm just going to... Excuse me. I'm just going to get a plate and we're going to put a couple of paper towels in there. Whoop, I think we lost you. There we go. And I'm just going to take these out and put them onto my plate. So while those are cooking, let me show you how I, how I would serve this because this is now ready. So for a tapas style meal, which is a small plate, right? I'm going to take some of these beautiful beans because now they're really stuck together. And you know, if you notice, I didn't add any salt to this because I've got pancetta in there, right? Yeah. So the yeah. pancetta is going to give it that flavor. 
So the way I would serve this is I've got this here. Keep an eye on this in the meantime. Mm. And you can tell when it's ready, right? You'll yeah. be able to see it. It'll, yeah. it'll get nice and firm and all the other stuff. So. These two recipes are great ideas for, for just to eat in our backyards. And I think we would just want to have easy food, just comfort, like nice, yummy, easy to make food. You just Absolutely. bring it to your backyard. Look at that. Yes, some cheese. Well, this is some parm I'm just going to put on top, right? For sure. And these are those uh, beet crackers. So what okay. if I'm serving this to you, Paula, when you're here? Um, Yay. This is how I would serve it to you. Okay. Beautiful. With more parm on top. And you could grate the parm if you want. I happen to like the big flake. Yeah, 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 me and too. There you go, my friends. That's your first tapas dish. Can you see that okay? Oh, look at that. Uh, I no, just... It's going to fall all over the place. Mm, there you go. Beautiful. Okay, so that's one of those things that, I mean, I should give that a try, right? Just so yeah, you know yeah, how good or bad it is. And the consistency is, is not like a soup. It's just like a nice, um, it's just like a, kind of like a stew, a little wet. A quick stew. It's like a stew. And you oh, can use, okay. you know, use your, um, use your uh, crackers. Uh, oh, sure. This is how I'd serve it if I was having a barbecue outside. Yeah. How I'd serve the dish. Beautiful. Beautiful. Excuse me. That's awesome. Okay. And then these are our chickpea fritters, guys. Let me just do a couple for you that are actual um, fritters. Very nice. And you know, adjust your oil, right? If the oil is too hot, things are going to burn too quickly. It's not going to. Oh stop my it. goodness, oh. that looks amazing. Oh, and good. again, don't be afraid of jalapeno peppers. I just always keep saying, don't be afraid. So the, the jalapeno pepper in the scale from one to 10, how spicy the jalapenos are. Jalapenos are what, Chris? Number two. I would say on a scale of one to 10, you know, I'd probably say maybe, um, I don't know, uh, uh, two, one. <laughs> I think one too. You know what? I um I, uh, I I usually like Scotch bonnets and things like that. And for me, that's an ideal level of heat. I've tried those um, ghost peppers. So I'm taking this much, about a spoonful. Okay. okay. And I'm just gonna put this into the pan. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let this sort of cook. So you're making those without jalapenos? It's just like these ones are without jalapenos, but they got chilies in them because I did all the jalapenos sure. already. For sure. But you know, this is this is just such a lovely meal, and you can have this with anything that you like. So uh, you can have this with, as an example, a nice co coriander chutney or a tamarind chutney, tamarind. For coconut. sure. Very very. Maybe we can do like a like a um, like a labne or like a green oh, like for a sure. yogurt, right? Absolutely, yeah. You know, uh, it'd be anything, any any sort of thing that's going to complement the heat of this would go yeah. really well with it. For so sure. I'm flipping it over at this stage, guys. I just wanna, I'll show you one when I flip it over, just so you can yeah. see the color. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, super simple, just simple. A few ingredients, you put them together, and guys, in half an hour, you have something really great. Yeah, you can't not like cooking. Can you stop? Look at that. Oh my God, Chris, let's see, let's see. There you go. Uh, yes. yeah, there you go. Beautiful. And you know what? I feel like those, I would use them as a base of something on top like as an appetizer base absolutely, absolutely. you know yeah. all the parties that we do paolo sometimes i'll take i'll make something like this not quite not quite this one but i'll make something like that and i'll just put a little stuffing of something on top of it so it's got it's got a nice uh, additional bite to it and it's not a typical flatbread that people are used to yeah it becomes a nice sort of uh, surprise when they bite into it and they think oh this isn't flatbread that's right that's right well, that has been just amazing. Just golden. And amazing. that's it. And then yeah, you can thank enjoy you so it. much. Uh, so please don't forget, please, 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 please. You're going to love Chris' website. It's uh, foodinspires.com. Uh, he has tons of amazing, amazing recipes. The one that I just saw that I said, oh, my God, what is this? I just have to make it. I saw that you made candied habanero mango cookies. I what did. is that? That's amazing. You know what? You once you candy those uh, those uh, habaneros, it's just wow. incredible. They're uh, uh, it's a really simple recipe, and maybe next time you follow, if you have me back, yes. I will. Uh, 
I will uh, do them for you. It's really simple. It's just uh, I got the idea or the inspiration from a mango jalapeno cheesecake. I used to, I used to do in one of my classes, but it's a really beautiful recipe and the flavor of the sweet and the heat. That's amazing. Super. Thank you so Amen. much. Chris. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for uh -huh. this great conversation. I had an amazing time uh, as always with you. Um, everybody, thank you so much. Please don't forget to like and follow Genesis 360. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Please also follow my social media. I am Paula Zavala Chef, Zavala with a Z and a V. Paula Zavala Chef, I'm on all the social platforms as well as Chris, uh, Food Inspires. And thank you, Chris, again for being My here. Thank, thank you. And hopefully very soon we can see each other in person. We can give uh, ourselves a big hug. And real hug. hugs, not air hugs, real hugs. Right, a real, <laughs> real hug. Yes, exactly. Hopefully very, very soon. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here, for, um, for all the followers, all the shares, all the likes. And we will see you next Monday with another great and amazing recipes. Thank you so, so very much. And Chris, thank you again. Have an nice, amazing, nice. A wonderful week, everyone. Cheers. Stay safe. Thanks. Si te gustó este video, vuelve a verlo en nuestro YouTube channel.